Today, over 20% of the Earth's landmass is covered in desert. What if it were 30%? 40%? What if half of the Earth's land surface was covered in desert? It's happening right now. Desertification is devouring more than 20,000 square miles of land worldwide every year. Desertification affects 74% of the land in North America. In Africa, more than 24 million acres of land are affected by desertification. And if current trends in soil degradation continue, the continent might be able to feed just 25% of its population by 2025, according to the Institute for Natural Resources in Africa. Overgrazing is the major cause of desertification worldwide. Land degradation and desertification frequently lead to migration when people can no longer subsist on the land. Here in the United States, human population growth in the desert has led to the widespread and increasing use of air conditioning. Based on government data, Stan Cox, a scientist at the Land Institute, calculates that air conditioning for the average U.S. home requires 3,400 pounds of carbon dioxide production per year. And an average homeowner in Arizona pays roughly $212 to run just one standard room air conditioner for 1,000 hours over the course of the summer. Is there a way to live in the desert without destroying its ecosystem? Can people exist in the desert without running their air conditioners all day? We believe that with careful planning using both the modern technologies and ancient technologies developed by indigenous desert cultures, a city can be built in the desert that can be carbon neutral, self-sustaining, and economically promising. Historically, the denizens of the desert have sought relief from the heat underground. As seen in these underground homes in Tunisia, the temperature underground remains a constant 54 degrees. In our desert city, we propose underground homes grouped around a central courtyard sunken into the earth. These courtyards provide space for windows, making the living spaces bright and airy. Passive solar energy can be absorbed during the day and released during the nighttime, which can become quite chilly in the desert. The individual housing units are grouped around a courtyard to provide density so the city will not sprawl into the desert. Yet individual units are designed to be spacious with high ceilings and well-planned air circulation. The bottom of the courtyard serves as a catch water with a high capacity drain in the center. The bottom of the courtyard will be attractively landscaped with native plants. This practice is called xeriscaping. It will ensure that no precious water is necessary to irrigate the decorative plants. Some people will not want to live underground. Earth-bermed homes can be built above ground that will catch and store their own water, produce their own energy through photovoltaic roof panels, and utilize both the warmth of passive solar and the coolness of the earth. Water is precious in the desert. In Desert City, all available rainfall will be carefully stored and recycled. Rainfall will be collected underneath each housing unit's courtyard in large storage tanks known as cisterns. Large greenhouses placed on the surface of the land will be able to catch volumes of water on their roofs. Water will be purified and nitrates removed using the most efficient and renewable technologies. All water used by homes and businesses will be treated and recycled. The desert city will be fed by crops grown in the surface-based greenhouses. Many desirable food crops need abundant sunshine and warm temperatures. Crops such as strawberries, tomatoes, and melons all thrive in greenhouse environments where temperature can be controlled by heating and cooling pipes buried in the ground and where pests and pathogens can be eliminated. In the past few years in the United States, orange crops have been disrupted by unusual weather in the areas they've traditionally been grown. Citrus fruits will do well in Desert City's sunny greenhouses. Crops can also be grown outdoors, without irrigation, using Swalis, a rainwater harvesting and soil conversation strategy used to slow and capture runoff by spreading it horizontally across the landscape. Many trees and shrubs naturally make their home in the desert, including mesquite and desert ironwood. Trees will be planted as windbreaks and native plants will help stabilize the soil, preventing dune formation. Non-native species such as olives, figs, and pomegranates also thrive under arid conditions. 
Desert City will attract a variety of economic activity. Stores and businesses can be grouped around covered large courtyards and atriums, which will remain cooler during the daytime for the comfort of employees and customers. Transportation will be provided by a carefully planned, expandable subway system, and connecting tunnels will allow comfortable passage between businesses and homes. Some tunnels will be dedicated to bikes, electric scooters, and segways. Desert City's main export will be electricity. Photovoltaic solar farms will stretch out from the edges of the city, utilizing the desert's most abundant resource, sunshine. Plentiful silica available in the environment and a technologically oriented workforce will encourage the manufacturing of solar panels directly where they will be used, thus eliminating the need for shipping. In addition, Sterling engines will be powered by the heat differential between air and ground temperatures, day and night, and wind turbines will be placed on top of the greenhouses. Human beings need to learn to work with the desert, respecting its ecosystem and using its resources without creating more desert. Desert City offers the hope that we can be of benefit to the desert while offering a safe and comfortable habitat for people to thrive in.